today's episode, we'll take a look at what it took to recondition this bottom board or pedal board of the piano. It's certainly not the most exciting part of the instrument, but it's just as critical as all the rest of the pieces of the piano. One of my mentors recently told me that to do a good restoration job, you need to touch every single piece of the instrument or the machine. And well, he's not wrong because every piece here has some sort of issue with it. This bottom board of the piano is just that, the bottom of the piano, or you might say, the bottom of the barrel. There's 105 years worth of dirt to remove here, and it felt like it took 105 years to get it clean. say that's enough for a first pass. Now to clean up the hardware. Again, I'm doing a sympathetic restoration, so the goal isn't to get things shiny, it's just to remove as much dirt as possible. The wire wheel is great for cleaning up metal hardware. I even found that if I'm careful. Oh my god! <laughs> Oof! <sighs> if. If I'm careful, I can use the wire wheel to clean up wooden parts. Each pedal has a return spring to bring it back to its rest position. Each spring presses against a felt pad, and these felt pads, after a hundred some years, are pretty worn out, compact, and filthy. Time for some replacement felt. Look at that lovely new red felt. Yum! Liquid graphite. With all the parts off this bottom board, it's pretty obvious to see that it's got uh, a little bit of a problem. But a little bit of a challenge is when I go to clamp it, this front beveled edge isn't much for the clamp to push against. Hmm. There we go. Time to glue it to it. Even though the board wasn't broken in half or in multiple pieces, I was able to use a fine applicator bottle and a palette knife to work glue into all the cracks. Thankfully, all the clamps were able to pull those cracks together so there were no gaps because I'm using hide glue and it can't fill any gaps. All right, 
I'll let it dry overnight and see how I did in the morning. Thank goodness, it came together just fine. Now, to get all the glue residue off. Let that dry overnight, and I did give it a coat of aerosol shellac before I started assembling. The six blocks here that I'm about to install are the mounting blocks, or the interfacing blocks, that the pumping bellows attaches to. Like all the other parts of this board, they got cleaned up, and they also needed new felt, which I replaced. As we saw earlier, there are three pedals on this piano, and each one has a spring. Well, two out of the three springs were broken, so I replaced those. Thankfully, I can still get new exact matches. Okay, well, if two out of three springs are broken, yeah, let's just replace that third one, why not? I mean, come on. These springs are very difficult to access once the piano's together. So, that third one that wasn't broken was playing on borrowed time, in my opinion. Now that I got the new springs in and everything cleaned up, it's blatantly obvious that I should have replaced these bushings. So I replaced these bushings, six in total. Now that the restringing's done and the bottom board is back on, I think this baby's ready to land. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Nate is our captain. We do anticipate a bit of a rough landing. We kindly ask that you return your pianos to the upright and locked position. Ah, a downright upright. Now let's see about those pedals. All right, yep, that one seems pretty good. And the metal pedal. Ooh, yeah, nice. And this last one, uh, uh, oh yeah, that's the clutch. Of course I'm joking. We've got a ways to go yet before we can see why they're really there. Now it's starting to look like a piano.
Next week's episode is going to be action-packed. Stay tuned, if you want. No pressure.